taking a walk in the forest. You breathe in the crisp, fresh air. Trees are constantly cleaning toxic pollutants out of the air and absorbing CO2 to produce oxygen for you to breathe. You see the gnarly roots sprawled across the forest floor. The roots prevent erosion and landslides, soak up stormwater to prevent floods, and filter pollutants out of the water. You see the vibrant leaves swaying in the wind, unless it's winter, of course. But in the summertime, leaves provide shade and cooling, so you can turn down the AC and save money. Even when trees do lose leaves in the winter, they let sunlight pass through and warm you up nice and cozy. You spy a squirrel savoring its supper. Forests hold about 80% of life on land, helping to sustain the biodiversity that is so crucial to the health of humans and the earth. In addition to the wildlife and the cute baby bears, one quarter of the human population also relies on forests just to survive. And who knows, forests could still hold the undiscovered keys to life-saving cures for lethal diseases like cancer. But forests can help save our lives only if we save theirs first. Since the dawn of man, almost half of the planet's trees have been cleared away. They didn't stand a chance against our blades, our machines, and our infinite desire for more. More agriculture, more livestock, more timber, more roads, heck, more golf courses. Today, despite reforestation efforts, we're still losing about 10 billion trees every year. You think about the habitat loss, the suffering wildlife, and the irreversible biodiversity loss. The forests being chopped down the most today are also the most biodiverse in the world, especially the tropical rainforests of South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia, which hold millions of precious species. It could be gone in less than 40 years. You think about the carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere. Deforestation can account for about 10% of our annual carbon emissions. Forests are one of our best existing carbon storage options, having been absorbing and storing carbon for hundreds of years. But when they're cut down, then burned or left to rot, they emit that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Billions of tons of it every year. So, shouldn't we be doing something about this? Ah, uh, well, you see, the problem is that people are making big bucks off of cutting down trees to fulfill your desire for products like beef, soy, palm oil, and paper. But if consumers like you do some research, stop buying these kinds of products, and demand more sustainable methods, the deadly deforestation will not need to continue. With growing pressure, companies like JBSSA, the world's top meat packer, have already pledged to help reduce deforestation. So hopefully, if you're watching this on a hologram in the 22nd century, you'll still have beautiful forests to walk through. But it could be much better than that. We could have also replanted some of the forests that we've destroyed. Countries and initiatives all around the world are already pursuing huge reforestation efforts. I'm talking about initiatives like the Trillion Tree Campaign, the 10 Billion Tree Tsunami, Plant a Billion Trees, One Trillion Trees Initiative, the Bong Challenge, as well as government programs in China, Ethiopia, Ireland, India, the US, and more. So that's great, right? You already know many of the incredible benefits that trees can provide. But that doesn't mean planting trees is always beneficial. It must be done properly and carefully, like piecing together broken glass, or else it could do more harm than good. Yet many reforestation efforts don't seem to understand the three basic tenets of proper reforestation. One, thou shalt plant trees in the right places, where the benefits they provide outweigh the damage they do. For example, trees are important carbon sinks, but grasslands and wetlands can actually store more carbon than forests, while also preserving their own unique biodiversity. 
The uh, initiatives are planting trees that could destroy ecosystems like the grassy Great Plains and India's Kaveri River Basin. 2. Thou shalt plant native trees. If the trees aren't native, then they clearly aren't meant to fit into the natural environment. They could just die off, or worse, kill the competition and take over. <laughs> This actually happened in California, where hundreds of thousands of non-native eucalyptus trees have been planted, eradicating native plants with their own herbicides. They'd fit in perfectly back in Australia, but not in California. 3. Thou shalt plant natural forests, not monocultures. Like the iPhone knockoffs of forests, monocultures are essentially single-species tree plantations without the diversity of trees in natural forests. These plantations can make big bucks once harvested, but they cannot provide the important benefits of biodiversity and carbon storage that reforestation efforts promise. Yet, much too much reforestation is still monoculture. Of the billions of trees planted by China's reforestation program, about 99% were monocultures, as were up to 82% of Brazil's and about two-thirds of the International Bong Challenge's reforestation totals. So planting billions of trees may sound good, but it's not enough. Trees also need to be planted properly, starting with those three basic tenets. So don't get fooled next time you hear about a billion tree movement, a trillion tree campaign, or a dang that's a lot of trees campaign. Ask, are they planting trees properly? Now is the time to start valuing this green more than this green. By replanting forests properly and preserving what forests we have now, one of the most valuable pieces of our planet will sustain us for generations to come. By themselves, forests won't save the earth, but they are one key step towards a healthy, sustainable future.